Hey, bald guys, you wanted more, we gave you more. With the all-new Pitbull from Skull Shaver, we gave it a more powerful motor, more blades to choose from, and a sleeker design that fits right in the palm of your hand. So you can shave anytime, anywhere, wet or dry to get the smoothest shave possible with no nicks or cuts and be done in 90 seconds for the best five-minute home haircut. Try our Beast Clipper for your hair and beard. Want more? Get more with the all-new Pitbull from Skull Shaver at SkullShaver.com. Welcome to another episode of the Devin Way Show. I am your host, Dev Nasty, a.k.a. Dangerous Dev Nasty, a.k.a. Choke Your Mom Out, a.k.a. Choke Your Pop Out. Um, and today, before I, uh, you know, uh, first I want to get into my, the, the, the people that's always here with me. You know what I'm saying? My my, my co-host, uh, Porter Rich. <laughs> it's the people's champ, y'all. Porter Rich, we here. Let's go. And, of course, all the way over here... It's your girl Valeska D, the fashionista. Y'all already know. You know, Dev, this is this is this is different for us. I know. You know? And not for nothing, everybody, I just got my braces removed. So it's just the way I'm talking yeah, her now. Lips is, is different. like slipping off her teeth. Yeah, different. it's a yeah. lot. She so know how to bear talk. with me. She don't know how to talk like this. She's learning back again. I'm, lo- I'm learning. I'm learning. <laughs> and um today, uh, you know, just like we do a lot in this second season, we have a very, very special guest. A guest that in a, in a year or two, we wouldn't we would only be able to get on this motherfucking <laughs> show. Um, uh, we got a guest on that can actually fuck me up, uh, <laughs> and is trying to convince me uh, to come to the gym so he could beat my ass. But we're gonna have to work out a thing where I go to the gym and he comes to the dojo so uh, we can exchange ass whoopers properly. Right. <laughs> but we have um, one of the, if not the best welterweight in the world right now mm. um you know the only thing that separates this man is having that that gold on on, on around his waist you know mm. what i'm saying the man himself jerron boots and this is in the building yo. <laughs> what's going on bro what's up man uh, thank you for having me <laughs> yo man we appreciate you coming on man yeah why why are you trying to trick me into coming down there nah, and fuck it, me up it's not like that <laughs> <laughs> i'm just telling you to come down and get your workout on that's okay. all. all right just a workout get, get your workout on you know learn some boxing get okay. your get your hands sharper what's what's MMA. the workout what's the workout consist of it can consist of a lot of things it, it consists of getting punched on no Okay. Not for your first day. Not okay. for your first day. Okay. Not for your first day. Okay. Your, your first day, my dad might have you uh like working on defense, like you know, okay. like sharpening your defense up, having you move your head and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And then second day, he might give you some pad work or pause, but stick work. The, or, the <laughs> Yo, a lot of pause. <laughs> <laughs> the noodles. A whole lot of pause. Yeah. Whole, <laughs> whole lot of pause. Now, do I what I have to fight in the traditional boxing style, or will I be able to be more squared up as far as like MMA style? Um. It depends if, like, if you have a fight coming up or something like that. Oh, yeah, I ain't got no fight coming oh, well, up. This is me. I'm podcasting. If, if, it's, you, if, if it's just you, just to, uh, like being yourself, you could just, just come how you are. You know? Okay. All right. And he, he just, he'll fix you up and sharpen you up. And I appreciate you coming yeah. on this shit today, man. We're going to talk about a lot of shit. Something that I wanted to jump, I wanted to jump right into. Um, because of the what's going on with boxing, a lot of people might not know of you. They're going to. This is a fact. I, I, I know what's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, but people that don't, the casual boxing fan is tuned into more to like the spectacles and things like that. What's going on with the the Paul brothers or even like watching Mike Tyson fight again and stuff mm-hmm. like that. How do you feel that, you know, what do you feel about what the Paul brothers are, are doing? And how do you think that's affecting boxing as far as like negative, positive 
Um, well, I feel like those guys they they bring in their fan base, the YouTube mm -hmm. fan base, and you know Disney fan base to boxing. But then again, it's not fair to you know the guys that have been boxing all their life and been you know been in the game all their life, mm -hmm. been grinding since they was babies, fighting in tournaments, winning tournaments and stuff like that, and they just you know they just came out of nowhere and they fight main events, cool main events, and getting big big paydays. And to some guys, that's not fair, mm -hmm. right? Hasn't it always been a thing, though, like boxers that, like you, you a humble guy. Yeah. If you talk a lot greasier, you would probably be way more known. So they got the performance part down first through YouTube, even if it wasn't, they wasn't boxing. They made the personality big enough. And it seems like the personality thing worked for AB. Even when he started losing yeah. some fights, AB still getting fights. See, the difference with me, I feel like if I was to talk, it would make it worse. They, make pe they already don't want to fight me. Mm. So... Then when I back up what I say, and then me talking to them all crazy, that's going to make it 10 times worse. So that's why I just stay how I am, humble, and, you know. And that's why I keep winning and going the way that I'm going. Mm. Now, right. I know um, also, what do you think about this? Because the Paul brothers, thank you, they started doing things like they started speaking out about, like, fighter pay and things like mm. that. And they're actually, like, for the people that fight on those undercards, some of them are making two to four times what they've ever made. What about that aspect? Because, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's good things about it and there's bad things about it. It's like, the bad things was them, you know, like, it's not fair to the other guys that have been grinding all their life. But then again, they bringing that fan base and they helping other fighters now because, you know, they they got a big backing. And like you just said, some of the guys that was on that card made probably the most money they ever made in their life. It's it's crazy because I wanna I wanna chime in because it's crazy that Dev is like asking you your opinion on that, right? And then earlier I was doing my own homework just on you. You know what I mean? Cause though I've seen your highlights, I'm familiar with Philly, I'm familiar with what you're doing, you know what I'm saying? But I wanted to get some more information on you. And I went and found that like, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you won a golden gloves that were like what, 18, 19? I won at 16. Okay, 16. Yeah, I won at 16. So you and your, they, I read in an article somewhere that your father and you kind of like chose to like, because at one, early in your career, you was already kind of like getting ranked as mm -hmm. like somebody, you know, a contender coming mm -hmm. up that's like a problem. But you and your father chose, instead of taking these fights that would be so-called like these kind of like big fights or whatever, hype around fights, y'all chose to fight just almost anybody, everybody. Y'all just wanted, you just wanted more wreck. Like, to get your, like, you know what I mean? Stuff really together. See, with me, coming up, when I turned professional, and I was about, like, 4-0, 5-0. Got you. Then we started calling out the guys that was undefeated. We were sending contracts to them and stuff like that, and they were saying no, always turning me down. So I just had to fight who who I could get. Right. And the same thing going on right now. I just got to fight who they, who, who they ever can get. Right. Because a lot of guys don't want to fight me. So mm. that's, that's what type of time I've, I've been on in my whole career, and I just got to stay patient. That's the only thing. Being patient and uh, waiting this process out, but I think I know for sure I will be world champion in 2022. Amen to that. And I, I, I ain't gonna hold you. I felt that though when I read that, like, and I just felt that y'all was on that type time. Like, yo, nah, we not like picking and choosing. Nah. Like, we taking whatever in the path, and we wrecking whatever's in the path to get to where we need to be. Most definitely, yeah. whoever whoever they uh exits the fight, we say yes to, and uh, we do our part, our end. They just don't do their part in it. And they, mm. they say, yeah. The next thing you know, they, a couple of days later, they'll come back and they'll be like, nah, uh, I hurt my hand. That's what, what? I said. Or, or they'll be like, oh, I caught cool of it. No, you didn't. We just, like, you was in a gym sparring or training. Not to, like, I, listen, yesterday. I like, ain't, listen, so I ain't gonna hold you. Yeah. Quickly, I seen your name <laughs> and the names that some, because, you know, you read comments, you yeah. read people, like, in the names that they was mentioning so-called to be they was all the elite names yeah. like of you know i guess your weight division and all that out there like the elite names of people who doing them now that's what they was mentioning for you yeah but i mean since my my first fight that i fought on tv i was 18 no i fought a kid named armando Alvarez. he was about 15 and 0 or something like that 16 and 0 i beat him after that fight i just was calling out everybody saying well i want to fight this guy i want to fight this guy and I never responded Hold on, was back. you stunting on him and smiling and all types of shit yeah, and playing when I, games? When I froze and yeah. Yeah, he's <laughs> see, this the thing. So this this the type of shit I don't fuck with. <laughs> like if you gonna beat me the fuck up, just beat me don't up, bro. Show, bro. No, like, yeah. Nigga don't like show. staring all freeze frame, taking pictures for, for niggas <laughs> and shit in between beating niggas up. Like, yeah. come on, man. You can't I don't, be I don't 
I don't know. It just, That's hilarious. It, that part <laughs> no. was actually crazy because I don't. I, I like I, I know for a fact that I can't do that same exact move again. Right. Because it was just everything was in motion. Like right. I was just I was so that like, wasn't so that wasn't like a signature move. No, it was just because they he, saying they go ahead, go ahead finish. Go no, ahead. he he when he was throwing he was throwing like a one two three. I slipped the one. I slipped the two, but I was right handed. Then when I run to the hook, I turned southpaw and I just so happened to stop and freeze. I don't know why I did that. It was like weird, like. It was funny. It looked cool. It was funny. <laughs> <laughs> and after I did that, my Instagram went crazy. Yeah, nah, that was that was ridiculous. Now, what you are you with a big promoter or like how does this whole promotion part of it work? Uh, right now, uh, me and my dad and uh, Cameron Duncan, we just we working for Showtime right now, so we we got things in the works. So mm-hmm. you know, hopefully, all those things fall through, and that's where we. That's so where Showtime right itself is is they have their own promotion, like like Golden Boy and all that kind of shit. I'm, I mean, well, they just they do. Showtime do they they own thing too besides like other promoters too mm-hmm. like do what other promoters do and stuff like that. Uh, they so they got their own lane like basically Showtime mm-hmm. is their own lane. They only did one thing with uh, they only did one thing with one person that was fluid, and I'm looking to be the second. So oh no, that's oh, yeah, yeah, that. no, that's, yeah. that's, that's it's no it's no work. So hopefully you know everything go down how it's supposed to go down. Cause cause a lot of people don't know how um the promoters play a role in it. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Including me. I don't know exactly. That's why I'm asking you, mm. like, um, you're not able to get certain fights. Mm. Um, people say that you're low, you know, high and risk, low reward. Low reward. Mm. And that's only, that's not based off of, I, I mean, we know the skill set. It is based off mm. the skill set, but it's based off of, if I lose, if I if I beat this guy and a lot of people didn't hear of him, it, uh, it doesn't do anything yeah. for me. If I, you know, if I lose to this guy, you know, it looks a certain way too. And they know that most likely. Yeah, but right, they can't say that now because my name, like, ringing bells right now. So they can't say that right now. And it's not, the money not the problem right now. They just don't want to fight. These guys just don't want to step in the ring. That's the only thing. Mm. I ain't going to hold you. Everything I read on you, bro, and this, like, you know, Dev, no, I keep it all the way funky. Like, mm. everything I read on you, though, like, from, like, journalists and people that do these, like, write-ups, they was like, like, they know what you're dealing with. They know what you're working with. They was actually trying to say, that's why when you was talking about a signature move, mm. I actually was going to ask, like, because they were saying, like, this, like, I don't I don't know, because I don't know boxing terms perfectly like that, but mm. they were saying it was like this certain, like, roll, you know, when you weave on something, and then you come rock, with the... Rock back or the shoulder roll. Yeah. Shoulder roll. Either one, when you come with the uppercut after. <laughs> Whatever, whichever one is, because I've seen a couple of knockouts in your highlights where it was the same move. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you it's almost like a counter joint where mm-hmm. you wait for them to do that shit, mm-hmm. and then you go ahead and do what you know how to do, and that shit be like on a button every time. Yeah, it's, it's called the shoulder roll. It's the setup. Yeah, not that. Sh- you let them think you got your hands down, and you just, when they throw the punch, you just roll your shoulder back. And they gonna fall right into the uppercut every time. That shit was mean, bro. <laughs> so that how shit. long? So how long you've been doing uh, boxing in general? Um, I've been boxing all my life, like is, pampers, jumpers. Is that something you wanted to do, or you feel like, as you know, a family that comes from boxing, is that something that you feel as though they pressured you to do, or this is something you essentially wanted to do? Nah, uh, my dad never pressured me to uh, box. He just wanted me to learn how to fight, mm-hmm. and that's that's what I did. I learned how to fight, and. You know, I took it to a different le- level, but I used to I used to play basketball though. I used oh to play wow! Basketball. I was playing basketball and boxing at the same time. Okay. But basketball wasn't fun for me no more, like how boxing was. So I just like I'm just stick with boxing and been boxing ever since. And you sure your dad ain't pressure you? Cause your nah. dad's a strong personality. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he, no. <laughs> he he in all the articles I should, too. I should, he in I all the articles. Brung him. I brung him. <laughs> they, yeah, met, they mentioned pops in all the articles saying yeah. like he was just close to you, close to your whole shit. No, I just like with me, I had two older brothers and. I just learned from native like they mistakes and stuff like that. So with me, everything easy. Right. It just everything all natural is easy for me and I I just do what I gotta do. Listen to my corner, have fun and uh and make things happen, man. Another question I have for you. Your nickname. Mm-hmm. Did that shit come from you knocking niggas out their boots? <laughs> yeah. nah. I was gonna ask if it was from you knocking boots, but your girl's here. I don't want you. I, I'm, 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 scared. Scared. I'm, I'm scared. Listen, I'm scared. listen, I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm Look, scared. I'm gonna go with the fighting <laughs> shit and say he was knocking niggas out their boots. Listen, I'm scared because when we had this show, you know, we got the ladies around, we got a lot of stuff. I get in the, I get into trouble sometimes, <laughs> and our show is kind of wild, a little raunchy sometimes. So I'm, I'm a little scared and trying to be reserved with the questions I ask. You know what I mean? No, you good. Um, but my, my nickname originally was Boops, B O O P S, and okay. my mom gave me that nickname when I was little. But and when I was in the gym running around, you know, being a bad little kid in the gym, 
going to the gym with my dad and stuff, they thought he was saying boots like the shoes. And ever since we just kept it like that, it just stuck with me. So mm. that actually yeah. happens with a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, or, or, or it'll be like a kid, uh, like your little brother or something, can't pronounce it. So if your name's Speedy, yeah. they say Petey next Petey. to you, know you Petey. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like that's right. happened a lot, a lot, a lot of times, man. But with boxing, you know, you've been doing this for a long time, right? Mm -hmm. You know, eventually you might want to start a family, have kids, you know, down the line. I'm not saying right now, you're young. How old are you, 24, 23? Yeah, 24. Yeah, you're a baby. You got a long ways to go. Mm -hmm. But would you want your your child to be a boxer just like you if you had a boy? Um, If I was to have a boy, um, I would I would just do what my dad did with me. Like, mm -hmm. like, like I said, he never forced me to box. I'm going to just teach him how to fight, mm -hmm. and I'm going to let him go pick whatever sport he want to play. Yeah. So if it's golf, go be a golfer. Right. If it's hockey, go play hockey. I don't yeah. care. I'm supporting. I could tell that your dad didn't force you because you were playing two sports. Yeah. You know, if it was a forceful thing, mm -hmm. you would have just been doing boxing as a whole. Right. That's what's up, Which though. one was he cheering on the most, though? <laughs> Come he, was on. At, he was at my game. He was at everything. He was at, he was at all my. He ain't missed not one game. Cause I know your dad. Your dad want wreck too. His dad yeah. wants to fight and beat people yeah, up yeah, for sure. You seen the video? Right? I'm yeah, telling I'm you, he's in the interviews and he's yeah. in the highlights. Bro, like you no, know that man, the his dad something. be trying to like lure people in too. Like come, cause that's what it is. I might go down to the gym and it's not him. It's his it's dad beating me the right. fuck up. You know what I'm saying? And then he got the excuse. He could just be like, "What you can't take something from this old head? Just right. beating my motherfucking ass." You know what I'm saying? So I. I I, I look at it and say, um, it's super impressive to see how you're beating people. Mm -hmm. And it's a gift and a curse. It's, it's very impressive to see you do what you do, but it's definitely scary for the people <laughs> in that you know class. So yeah. when you're in there, how much of that is you like reacting in, in the time? Like, is, is it like everything is slowed down um, for you or... Or the com the combinations kind of like premeditated, like I already threw this combination. Sometimes I'm just throwing it, and and if it land, it land. You know what I mean? Um, with me, it just like I said, everything all natural for me, and I go off uh, what they doing. So if they throw something and I see I I see I have an open shot, I'm gonna take it, or I'm gonna set them up, set them up, and beat them in, and then and then take it. Mm. And you're orthodox, right? Both. Fight both yeah, sides. I know because I've seen I've yeah. seen you fight southpaw. Yeah, and I fight right handed too. But <laughs> but originally. Are you? Are you? Do you write normally? I do right everything hand? with both hands, even when you write and shit like that. Yeah, it's, it's, sometimes. Okay. I yeah. believe if I am mistaken, I believe it because, I, like I said, I was doing my homework on mm -hmm. homie, just making sure I know what I'm talking about. And I believe they had him as orthodox, but they know he goes southpaw too. Yeah, man. no, I watched him, and I know how frustrating that could be for a person to be getting those different looks. Like yeah. it seems like it's not that big of a deal. But a person posturing themselves in a different way where now their, you know, your lead hand is here and mm -hmm. their lead hand is coming from his right hand now is super, super awkward. Yeah, and a lot of people don't know how to fight southpaws. Yeah. So it's, they think you got to fight a southpaw a certain way. You just got to fight them normal. You can't overthink it. You just got to fight them so normal, normal. does that just mean you're ambidextrous? Like when you fight? Yeah. Mm. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, and that's, that's, that's very, very rare. Like some people... Like, let's say if a fighter's lead eye gets hurt or something like that, and, and you know, they throw their jab with their left hand, now their left eye is hurt, they they could be fucked because they can't turn their body the yeah. other way. Or Him, on the other hand, it won't even fucking matter. Like, with me, like if one of my hands hurt, it wouldn't nobody know, but I could just turn this up uh, and take, you know, take some off of my, my hand. Mm -hmm. But at that point, you're just fighting mirrored. Yeah, yep. yeah. Damn. The opposite, yep. Nah, that that's crazy. No, so you so you just mentioned like let's say if you did hurt your hand, mm -hmm. Wally said something about, you know, would you want your kids to fight? Mm -hmm. Now I've heard some extreme things. We in a different time, very sensitive times, mm -hmm. whatever. I've seen people say shit as crazy as like crazy to me, right? No disrespect. They'll say like having your kids play football, little league is child abuse and all types of shit. Like I've heard that shit now mm -hmm. because of the um, information that we have now about CTE and things like that. Mm -hmm. People feel like contact sports where your brain gets hit and mm -hmm. stuff like that is like um, either unfair or irresponsible for parents to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I get what you're um, saying. So what I wanted to ask, because you talked about your hand, mm -hmm. have you ever been hurt? Like even in sparring where you was like really buzzed or whatever, because in your fights I haven't you know seen that. You talking about getting hit wise? Yeah, yeah. Um, nah, n never, 
Never, never got hurt in a fight. Damn. So he's it's, saying his but, chin is like that. Right. No, even if a guy did hit me, I seen it. And I know how to rule, like take the punch away or take their power off the shot. So we call it rubber neck mm. in boxing. So it's Pause. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's crazy. crazy. That's, that's we, like, we definitely, hold on, we definitely yeah. ball neck. We definitely ball neck bringing that to sexual <laughs> shit. Oh, bitch, you got the rubber <laughs> neck. <laughs> but, but obviously you had to learn how to do it with the yeah. rubber neck. That's why I'm asking, like, even in practice, like, growing up learning, like, you never got, you nah. hit with them Jones where it's like, nah, I ain't trying to get hit no more with that shit. Nah, like I said before, the first thing my dad teach is defense. You know, that's mm -hmm. what he, that's what he work on. And when we in camp, that's what we focus on defense. We try not to get get hit at all. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, but if we do gotta take a shot, we know how to take some power off. You know what I'm saying, so that's the only thing. Hey, quick question. I want to ask another question. Um, now I know you said since diapers, nigga, mm -hmm. you've been at it because I get it. I know I be like right training right from the rip. Mm -hmm. Did now as far as your regular life, going to school, stuff like that. How was that? Like, did, was it a lot of fights? What is, was it a lot of physical shit before the boxing, before you actually decided, like, hey, I'm going to go ahead and go at this shit professionally? No, every, for some reason, everybody just knew. Like, <laughs> they just knew. <laughs> for some reason, everybody knew. <laughs> they knew the vibes. They knew I boxed. And, I would, and I'd be like, how you know I box? Like, at this time, I mean, Instagram was out, but I wasn't really posting like that on Instagram. Mm -hmm. But back in the day, like, elementary school and middle school and stuff like mm -hmm. that, I'd just be like, how you know? And they'd be like, oh, so-and-so know your dad or so-and-so know your brother. Mm -hmm. So I'd just be like... And you was in Philly, so was niggas yeah. pulling the pistol out on you, lifting the shirt up like, nigga, nah, <laughs> I wouldn't want that? No, nah, they, nah, everybody keep it keep it simple. Keep it cordial. <laughs> yeah, he's he's a calm, yeah. nice, you look, nice no, guy. No, but yeah. you, come off, you come off as like just super pious, super humble, yeah. super like chilling. And what's crazy is though, that they be the niggas that are get in the ring <laughs> and all you mouthing off ass nigga. You know what I mean? Because yeah. a lot of niggas like to mouth off and do all this extra entertainment shit. But it be like the guys like you, for real, for real, that possess like a whole lot of just fury that they don't even understand where it comes from. Yeah, I, I, that's how I was raised, though. Like I said, my dad, my mom, they raised me right. You know what I'm saying? Just being humble and just wait your turn. Mm. And that's how you got to be. You be humble, be patient, your time going to come. Everybody, mm. everybody got their own time to shine. I'm talking now, to them, bro. Now, when did you get to the point... I'm not, when you could when you could beat your dad, because this is why I'm gonna what? tell you. Hold on, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you why. Nah. Because you know I'm close with Dan and you know his family and everything like that. And you know he'll tell me about like him catching his pops mm -hmm. with shit where it was just like where his where his pops is like no moss, I can't do it no more. I'm done, bro. Mm -hmm. When did you get? What age was you at? When your dad was like, all right, my nigga, you got it. Now we got to chill. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Give it real. Give it real. Me and my dad don't box, though. I'm saying, but he I'm saying, when he the pads for you and you just hit him with some you know, shit. Every, if you, and listen, if you got a kid and you train them, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? At a certain point, because like even with my son, I'm gripping him up, I'm choking him, I'm doing mm -hmm. what I'm doing. And I know that it's going to get to a point, you know, when he's 17 right. and he could move around faster yeah. than me, and now he behind me for real. I didn't give him my neck. He really got it. You know what I'm saying? So, pause. <laughs> I'm listening. Yo, I'm listening. Yo, Boots, come on, son. He had to turn his head on you for a minute. He said, I don't want no eye-to-eye -eye no, contact with that. I couldn't look at you. I, 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 you know what I'm saying? But what I'm saying is... How <laughs> crazy. Yo, this nigga How is crazy. worse. Yo, he worse, he worse than GB, yo. <laughs> he worse yeah, than my nigga yeah. GB. But, you know, it had to come a time where y'all was putting in that work, sparring and everything, and your mm. pops is like, wait a minute, now, he hitting kind of crazy. You know what I'm saying? I mean, well, it's not me sparring, but me, you know, my dad put the bodysuit on. Mm -hmm. So now he wear a double and triple he like under under the body yeah, suit. The so he got a, and all that. Yeah, so he got a <laughs> extra pad. Extra pad. Yeah, he got a double up and triple up when I'm hitting the body suit now. So that, triple up. Yeah. Yeah. He tried to get some they tried to get some me in the body suit. Mm -hmm. Like to make the uh body suit thicker. I'm trying to word my words right. Yeah, that's cool. It's, all, it's it's fine. It's fine. You don't want another pause <laughs> yeah. moment, right? We've been pausing the shit out of this joint. I know. But, uh yeah with the body suit he got he got some lady to uh to like Put like cushion, more cushion in the bodysuit, mm -hmm. and that didn't work. So he had to yeah. put a another body vest under a smaller one, and then he put the bigger one on. Tell pops in a minute he going to come in there like it's the fucking Tin Man. <laughs> well, listen, this with all um, metal on, my, let you go crazy. <laughs> my, my dad a little older now, so wait, I probably gotta get like a bigger guy. Gotcha. That's oh, okay. about it. Yeah, because mm -hmm. after hearing that, um, anybody, if it's Errol Spence Jr., Crawford, anybody that's <laughs> hearing that. 
It's going to make it even harder. I don't know if you're getting any title shot. So you would have to wait until, um, like, somebody stepped in. Like, what is it? Like, the, the WBC or something said, mm. you're a mandatory at this point. How does that whole thing work with mandatories? And um, well, with mandatories, you got you to gotta fight the champion. But if the champion vacate the belt, they make the one and two guy fight. But if, if the one and two guys can't fight, they'll make one and three or two and three. They, anybody in the top five will get a chance, basically. How often do people, like, vacate not to fight somebody? Like, how? Um, not Like, vacating not, is kind of crazy. Yeah, not not many, but some some people will vacate the belt just to move up and wait. So they they win a belt. At, say they win a belt at 40 or 47. They was like, oh, I don't want to fight here no more. I'm going to go to 54 and move up. Mm -hmm. And so they they vacate the belt, move up to 54, and, then, and fight for that exact same belt. Or the, something like that. Mm -hmm. at yeah, because they kind of get like automatic yeah. title shots yeah, so and they, shit like that. So, so say I'm at 47, right? And I I got all the belts at 47, and I move up to 54. I'm in. I'm gonna be in the top five of all the belts, basically. So I'm gonna have another opportunity and chance at 154, like within the next fight or two. So, but what makes them say a person is? Because I, I mean, obviously, we've seen people like destroying people mm -hmm. and um, still can't get fights and mm -hmm. things like that get avoided. Um, what makes a person get that shot? Because, like, for example, a nigga like Danny, mm -hmm. it felt like they they thought he was sweet and, and, and gave him the shot mm -hmm. and then, you know, end up losing the belt. Mm -hmm. um, you know what I'm saying? And then they, I, I think it was like when they do that, it'll be like an automatic rematch clause or something like that. And, mm -hmm. of course, they lose again or whatever like mm -hmm. that. But what is it that you have to do to make them say, no, we're going to make boots mandatory? You just got to keep winning. You got to keep winning and then... They'll slowly move you up the ranks, but if you get a like a big fight or a big win against a guy that's in the top five, then you they make you number one if you're number two. Or you or you, or say if if I'm number five or four and I fight the number one guy and I beat him, they're gonna make me number one. And they're gonna drop him down probably to like seven or eight. So it's they do stuff like that. So you gotta just fight the guys in the top five, and that's what we be trying to do, but you know, can't get those guys right they now. They ducking. They yeah. ducking. What's the, what's, the high, what's the highest ranked fighter that you get, got a chance to fight? Sergey uh, Sergey Levinets. He was ranked. Yeah, I that's, think I read on that. Yeah, I think he was like number eight before we four or number nine or something like that. And you did him dirty. Yeah. Punished him. Yeah. Damn. I think you might have did the roll joint on him. I think, I don't know if I'm He was playing correct, around a little bit. Yeah, he was acting up. You put somebody down with that joint. They were saying that was like your signature joint. It was crazy because no, you just. It was when I fought uh, Juan Carlos Abreu. Okay. September 19th of 2020. Okay. Yeah. So Now, another question I want to ask you, just because we like to get to know our guests. We mm -hmm. like to, like, tap in. We like, when we bring you here, it's like family vibes. So we on family vibes right now. If it wasn't boxing, just for the people out there, right, because we know this has been your passion since Pampers. Right. If it wasn't boxing, what do you have another passion where you could see yourself doing something else? If it wasn't boxing, what else could you see yourself doing? What else would it be? Like what right, else you good at out there? Like right now at this age? Yeah. If like, I wasn't boxing? Yeah. This age, periods, what, you, what else you got a passion for out there? Um, basketball was. Like, it was my oh, passion. Right, you did yeah, mention yeah, that. But it was like, like my passion, too. Like I had two passions at once, and I just chose the, the better route. But if I wasn't boxing right now, I'd probably be playing basketball or something like that. Hopefully, you know, would have been in the NBA. Or overseas right. or something like that. <laughs> and you was, I, 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 I can only imagine you was going hard. Because niggas yeah. that go yeah. hard don't go hard to just one thing. Yeah. Well, how, they, tall, they how tall are you, everything. Boo? How tall are you? Come on, keep your, how five, tall are you? 5'10". Five, 5'10", ten. Five, ten, NBA? How that, how that work out? I mean, the, I'm not a basketball AI, guy. AI, I'm I mean, not AI, a basketball AI, guy. Who's AI? I don't know. AI, AI was like 5'10", five, 5'9", five, I think. For real? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, nah, I wouldn't have think that. Nah, son. Yeah. Was high. Was right? or, Muggsy was shorter than that. Nah, Muggsy. Nigga, Muggsy, 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 Muggsy was like 5'5". Five, five. Nah, nigga, that's a fact. He was dunking. Yeah, that's yeah, a fact, dunking. but in my head, there's no way that... No, we, but, used to see, we used to see AI out there mm. with the crazy whips. He wasn't that small, bro. But I, No, no, he really is. I just mm. think AI is the prime example. He really is like 5, maybe 11 at the most. Word? And that nigga like never let his size yeah. like dictate what he was going to do on the court. Mm -hmm. I feel like he went out there and his heart dictated his size. You know how they like say that about dogs? Oh, yeah. Like it ain't mm -hmm. the size of a dog, right. it's the size of his fight. Mm -hmm. right. That's a hundred. And that's, 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 common. Common. And that's it's not common. Dave was uh Dev was asking it like how it works with basketball. Mm -hmm. You know, five ten isn't common point guard height. Mm -hmm. A little tall. Yeah, because right. usually short no, for them we, or be my height, six right. one. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's not right. common, but we just was stating like it's possible that a nigga could be like you know, his height 
and go crazy possible. and make like it. Like, if he goes history. as hard as he's going yeah. in boxing. Absolutely. Right. Though, if I would have, you know, stuck with it. You know? <laughs> what? <Yeah. laughs> Oh, and, and all I kept stretching. Yo, listen, bro, bro. Kept stretching. Hey, hey, look, hey, Boots, listen. Keep knocking niggas yeah, out, right? Yeah. And we're going to see you in the celebrity game soon. Most little definitely. celebrity basketball, Joe. We're going to see what you can do. Go ahead and show off. Most definitely. I might dunk. Yeah, listen, I got to get him into the dojo out, and try to choke him out oh first. My God. Just so, listen, I got to because I, w- I want to claim the fame, a little something to tell my grandkids and shit. Like, yo, I, I want to brag on something. Yeah. Even if I get, look, look, even if I get choked out, I'm like, yo. Now you he ain't choked doing, me hold out. Hold up, right, hold right, up. Right. You ain't getting choked out because he don't choke niggas. I, I listen, you I getting know, knocked out. I know. You're going to choke on the low. He's going to knock no. you out. He's training Not a little. Not if he's in a dojo, no. though. He's training a little bit on the low. No. This and that. He's training on the low because most boxers that I run into won't do any um, MMA work because, you know, it's more prone to mm-hmm. injury, shit like that. They don't want to have their arms hyperextended for arm bars and everything like that. But I actually <laughs> saw a little bit of his... um. His entry into a takedown, and it was it was pretty good. Like it was it was it was pretty good. Like so that means that you really over there fucking around a little nah, something. No, nah, I be playing around sometimes, but you know, we me and my dad train those guys that's in the UFC. Uh, Sean Brady, mm-hmm. uh, shout couple, out to him. A couple guys that's in CFFC. Um, Yo. You know, just be trying to get their hands right, and you know, getting them ready for their fights and stuff like that. But I do play around with them sometimes, and they be teaching me stuff and. I actually like kickbox one time with with them. Okay, mm. yeah, so it was fun. It was How fun. was that experience like with the kickbox? It was, you... I was using my hands the whole time. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> I was using my like... hands. He said, he said, I just I subtracted the kick. I just boxed. <laughs> I probably threw like one leg kick and that was it. That was... So what was you doing with your hands if they're trying to kick you or anything? What I was, was just you throwing punches? Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> so you wasn't trying to like check no leg kicks, nope. none of that. They wasn't getting none. That just... Oh. Ours is too long. Oh you shit! Bop, listen, bop, 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 bop. Listen, <laughs> listen. Let me listen. let me Keep ask you something. Keep what's the away. what's the most frustrating part about boxing? If you had to pick something that you're like, because you know like, clearly you do this seamlessly, right? Mm-hmm. Like you can you're probably box in your sleep. You know what move you're gonna <laughs> right. do, everything. Right. But what could be the what's your most frustrating part of the of the um, sport? I mean, and it could be anything. It could be the business aspect. It can be the physicality. It's not, it's nothing frustrating for me, but it's just that um, I, I'm not getting the fights that I want. When right. they duck you, yeah. I, when they duck you, I, it's frustrating. I said I've been saying this for three years. I want everybody in the top five, top ten. Nobody calls me out. Nobody says my name or nothing like that because they know that I'm. They know what. What I'm capable of. Mm. They know you're a threat. You're yeah, a threat to I'm, everything I'm out there. I'm a threat to the welterweight division, so they know, and they'll go fight somebody else. So mm. it's. I mean, let me ask you this. Um. First, well, first, because I, I don't want to stray too far mm-hmm. with the the whole thing with you train you, you guys training some of the MMA fighters. Are mm-hmm. you a fan of MMA? At yeah, all? I like it. Yeah, okay. I like it. Uh, it. It's better in person. Like I like watching it in person, and uh, definitely be fun when I'm there. So okay. I definitely like it. Because I know there seems to be like it's it's always a, a comparison. Like shout out to my homie Apollo Ali, who's mm-hmm. actually uh the the grandson of uh. Of Jersey Joe Walcott and everything, but he has a boxing podcast. Well, it seems like the boxing world and the MMA world always want to be like pitted against each other. Like which <laughs> one is better and all of that, which I, yeah. I'm always going to say. What's, what's, what's his podcast? Phantom Punch. Yeah, Phantom, Phantom, Phantom Punch, Punch podcast. podcast. Phantom Punch Shout Podcast. Shout Apollo. Yeah. Um, but you said you are, you do like it? Yeah, I, I like it. Yeah. And And when you watch it, do you understand what's going on? Like once it gets, a lot of people get lost in the grappling part, or they get they feel like it's boring or something. I understand it because I work with the guys, so I know mm-hmm. I know what's like somewhat what's going on. Mm-hmm. So I understand it. Somebody else might not, but I I do. So I definitely understand what's going on on the ground, the uh, you know the wrestling, the jiu-jitsu, all that stuff. And would you ever in could see yourself <laughs> in the future after you take over the division? Which, you know, I, I know you're going to do. Yeah. Um, after you do all of that, and I mean, probably you'll probably bump up to 154 and yeah. stuff like that naturally as your body goes. Matter of fact, this I don't care what nobody say. This nigga could go to 154 right now. This nigga, <laughs> this nigga could go to 160 right now. I don't give a fuck what he's talking about. But uh, would you? could you see yourself ever doing what, like, Clarissa is doing and saying, I'm going to go fight? Um... Yeah, hey, I think I'll do one. Just one, though. Just one. And it got to be against somebody that box. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> so no. I can do my thing. <laughs> okay, okay. So you're not, you're not going to go in there with a nigga that's like a crazy... No, uh, no. 
I would I would go against somebody that box and see how I do, see how I feel, and you know, if if I do good and I feel comfortable, then I you know start working my way up slowly. I got and you. Fight more. Who you think? Yeah. Who you think out of all the names they thrown out there, right? Because I, I I seen Earl Spence, mm-hmm. I seen Crawford, I seen, and I'm talking about when I was reading your article. Yeah. They had these names in your article. You know what I mean? So that meant a lot. Like that was saying a lot to me. Like mm-hmm. okay, they got him and his shit. That mean like whatever. Who do you think for you? Who do you think would be like the best fight for you right now? Like the best, the best, the biggest, and the best performance. Who do you think that person would be? I mean, right now, right now, I know I'm not gonna be able to get the champion, so we're gonna exclude the champions. So, uh, but I think Keith Thurman, Keith Thurman, and um, Ugas would be mm. perfect right for right now, and then. You know, world title, the next fight. Yeah, because Ugas um that's hum- recently and, beat uh Pacquiao and shit. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And 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 just real quick though, that's humble of you, bro. Yeah. That's humble of you to exclude people yeah. and say, look, I'm gonna exclude these guys because they've done this. Yeah. And I'm just telling you out of these guys, mm-hmm. I'll wipe these guys out to get to these rich, guys. Rich, rich, for real, for real. Hold on, hold on, rich. I'm just saying it's humble. Hold on, rich, rich. I don't think it was humble. He just knows that niggas is gonna run from nah, yeah. nah, no, but that's uh, respectable. Yeah, yeah, no, but- nah, I- that's like, respectable. Realistically, though. realistically, I know that I'm not gonna be able to get the champions right now. So I know I can get what's under that. Right. And that's Keith Thurman, you know, uh Pacquiao, that's maybe Sean Porter, if if they got him under that, you know, that 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 list right there, um, Ugas. And these people are all <clears throat> yeah. championship bred people. Like we we're talking crazy about Porter, names. like these like, people, crazy names. These fights are even, so even, close. Even Pacquiao too. Yeah, but I think he probably gonna retire. I think it's over. Yeah, or if he if he do fight again, he probably gonna fight Ugas one more time, and then that's who he just is, fought. That was his last yeah, fight yeah, where he lost. Fight. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, mm. I don't know. Like, I mean, Pacquiao definitely. You, I think that would just be dope for you yeah. on a bucket list level because obviously you had to grow up mm. watching Pac Man and everything like that. But what I want to know is, um, and I and I'm sorry, y'all, if you're not a boxing fan. Bear with us, you know what I'm saying? Because I am. I want to know what are the. It's one thing to say, yeah. If you put me against Keith Thurman, I could do this. Mm-hmm. If you put me, what are the weaknesses in your opinion that you see in a person like Bud Crawford, who a dude like me just knows I'll get my ass whooped? Mm-hmm. What are the weaknesses that you see in a dude like Bud Crawford that would make it where you'll 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 put his lights out? Um, it just. For me, my whole style is different. Like I, I can do everything. I fight orthodox, right-handed. I mean, orthodox southpaw. I can fight on the inside. I can fight on the outside. I can do it all, and I do something that they can't. And with me is when I fight somebody, I, I, I go into a fight and I do what I'm supposed to do, and I take your best attribute away from you, and I do it against you. Mm. So, so what's so what's uh Crawford's best a- attribute? Um, uh, I'm not, I'm not sure, mm. but whatever he think he could do, I could do better. Mm, sure. Mm. So that's and that's what and that's what anybody that's a champion, top five, they 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 know that. That's what I'm saying. So I'm just waiting my turn. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you can tell he's so excited no, about like he's, he's confident. He's, yeah. he's very confident, nah, and, and I, I know not, why. I know why though. Right. I'm not. I don't really talk a lot, so. And this like this probably the most I ever, ever talked probably. But no, that's what's up. Devil Way Show. And yeah, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we appreciate you did it yeah, here. I don't I don't talk too much. I, everybody know I'm quiet. I don't say nothing about nobody. And I just be sitting back but watching. Some, but look, but sometimes, bro, Maybe. we gotta say something. Because yeah. you know what? It's so much like business and mm-hmm. like politics behind a lot of this shit. Yeah. Where they don't really give a fuck about really like the hard work and everything like somebody like you, your father, your whole team mm-hmm. is doing on this side. Right. So it's like sometimes you got to step up and say, hey, what the fuck? Y'all blind? Yeah. Like, y'all don't see what's going on here? Like, whatever. So we ain't even mad at you, bro, because sometimes you got to say something, man. You got to pat yourself on the back and speak up for yourself because guess what? Waiting for other motherfuckers to do it, man. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think, I think I know, like you said, that you talking might make people run a little bit more. I, I, I humbly disagree. <laughs> I think that it talking shit, adds to the demand that comes from the crowd. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Things people can't fucking avoid. When they go on their Twitter, when they go on their Instagram, mm-hmm. everybody's in there saying, 
yo, Boot said this, Boot said that, because I watched Danny go through that, where his dad was the mouthpiece. Right. I feel like your pop will talk more shit for you than you will. You know <laughs> my, what I'm saying? My, my pop like me, though. He won't say too much either. He, he'll he talk here and there, but he... <laughs> He he's more like me though. He ain't gonna say too much. Yeah, I mean he don't say nothing yeah. like disrespect. He not no. as wild. He not wild like Angel. No. Yeah. <laughs> Angel's wild. Shout out to Angel. We love you. He <laughs> Angel wild. That's we just guy. we was just yeah. in the club with just Angel that, and yeah, the that's twins. My guy. You know what I'm saying? Wilding, drinking the whole nine. But you know your pop will you know will will speak up a little bit more and be mm. like yo boots this boots that. You mm. know what I'm saying? And I think that you do got to do that a little bit. You mm. know a, a little bit more, bro. You know what I'm saying? Um because. For the general audience, that's just what they fucking tune in. Like I said, A, B, he could lose again and again. Bro, just the idea of what he's going to say on the fucking, uh, like, right when they talk <laughs> the afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> that nigga Before the press conference, just the, the interview in the ring is going to be something <laughs> so crazy that he could keep getting people to yeah. buy in. So, mm -hmm. you know, I would definitely say talk your shit, dog. Talk, talk. I mean, I mean, I'm going to interject yeah. real quick mm -hmm. because I, fuck, I feel that, mm -hmm. but then at the same mm -hmm. time, I feel like it's a brand for the humble niggas to just put niggas mm -hmm. out. I don't want to talk to none of you niggas. Yeah, that's, that's, I'm that's a, I'm me a all the way. I ain't trying yeah, to talk to nobody. I don't want to talk. You know cool. why? Because like the AB shit was cool for the money, if that's what you want to do for the paper. Mm -hmm. Like, right? But you could really knock niggas out for the paper too. So it's like you don't have one choice. You got yeah. another choice. And like AB, I was tapped into AB and shot to AB. You know, shot to the whole fucking Cincinnati because I know like his whole shit is different. But like, I just felt like he was talking crazy. You know what I mean? You was doing a lot of antics. You had your girl wave your yeah, hair, no, no, brush no. your hair. I ain't saying that wifey got to come in and brush your shit yeah. when she thinks she's getting a marriage proposal. It was just, <laughs> for, me, for me, it was just too much antics for your fight not to match your antics. Mm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And me personally, like, because I'm a humble guy, mm. I can relate to being humble, yeah. right? right? Like, so I just felt like with all them antics, your action got to back them antics. If your action don't back them antics, them yeah. antics turn into some real goofy shit. Yeah, but AB a was shooting pornos and making albums and shit like that. Um, but Way I different. do, I do want to go into, I want to go into this because um, you here, you know me, you got your your peoples in here with you and everything like that. But I know that this has to be another pressure because we all feel these pressures. Just me doing this little show that means nothing. Little. Coming, you know, coming from, Fuck I'm just saying. you talk about, about this ain't no little show. From, this is a big Don't show, show especially if we was on here. from the other show that I made, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, m worth and all that type of shit. But the, the new pressures of people being in your face, um, you know, not wanting to be bothered, even when it comes to like male fans, shit like that, but also... The women fans, I know they have to. <laughs> they have to be in your fucking <laughs> look, face. Somebody well, else looks like a boxer. On, somebody on, else's face listen, just turns I'm into a boxer. To get hold on, hold on. Somebody listen, else's face just turns into a boxer I'm, face. Listen, <laughs> listen, I'm trying not to get changed. snuff. I'm just trying to get the answers that the people at home want. You know what I'm saying? But I know that it gotta be crazy. You being a young bull. Mm -hmm. Um. From Philly, look, look, he jeweled out. <laughs> I mean, he jeweled out. He walking around stocky, and he knocking people out. And one of the things that is a turn on for the... I know what's a turn off is if I go down to the gym and my girl come and she see you knock me the fuck out. <laughs> so I know the turn on. I know the turn on is, you know, you shutting niggas' lights out. What's that like and how do you, you know... How do you spin that? Because I know women could be like aggressive and shit like that. Uh, I mean, I don't know, about to me, I be chilling. You know, I stay to myself. <laughs> I go to the gym, come home. What's the DMs like? <laughs> <laughs> That was the political I answer. We want to know what the DMs look like. No, Wait, he, he pled the fifth before he even walked up here. I'm just putting that disclaimer out there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, them DMs, you know, they just probably all over the place. I don't check them because I get too many. It's, mm -hmm. I see what I can see, but that's about it. Mm, okay. Yeah. But that's smart though because you know you're young mm -hmm. and it's it's gonna come with the territory. You're gonna mm -hmm. have women. It's you know, and I'm pretty sure your girl know at the same time. It just comes with the territory. But the way you carry it, mm -hmm. that's the respectful part, you know, of a man. You know what I'm saying? Right. And the way you answer that, and the way you say you're gonna carry it, respect that no, as that, a woman. Yeah. 
it, it, it's just nah, phenomenal it, as even as an old head. You know what I'm saying? If you carry it like that, it's smart. Yeah, it's the smartest way. It's gonna get you far. It's gonna yeah, get you I, far. I just focus on my career. My family and do what I need to do. You, you know? seen the basketball boys just got hit for millions. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> listen, 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 they, they yeah, out here yeah. trying to get yeah, niggas. That's what I'm saying. You got you to stay to yourself. We super supportive of just doing things the right way. Because right. I feel like we've had too many boxers, too many um, entertainers, period, whether it be athletes, whatever, that have, you know, gotten to this shit, made their dreams come true, mm-hmm. reaped the benefits from it. And then kind of like it just get discombobulated and it don't, you know, we don't close out the right way. Mm-hmm. And I just feel like family, all that shit, bro, when we start operating a different way and really like cherishing that shit and taking that shit like seriously, like, yo, this is the most important thing. This is how I'm functioning. Right. Because guess what? I, I tell my sons that all the time. I say, yo, if you're all fucking up, I can't perform. Mm-hmm. You know, my son, 21. Mm-hmm. Right. I say, yo, if you can't, if you're not functioning, I can't perform. So it goes the same with family. When you got a girl that's really rocking with you and she understands the shit. Nigga. You know what I mean? Like, she all gotta that be a reflection shit. of you. Right. You, you could go, I just feel like you could go further, bro. And that's yeah. the new shit that we need to be on the cherishing family, cherishing careers, cherishing shit like that. Because we come from so much broken shit mm-hmm. in the black community right. that a lot of times we fuck a lot of good shit up. Absolutely. By 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 like backpedaling into like the old shit that we didn't know. Take that it we from was the old heads. <laughs> yeah, I and promise then you even and even yeah. seeing what they've done, you know, and even respecting women as a whole, mm-hmm. you know, respecting your significant other is a big reflection of who you are as an individual, you know. And I feel like we need to start promoting that more because I feel like rappers. Basketball players, all types of stuff. You see what they be doing out here? Yeah, yeah I was like a foul they, nigga back in the day. Like, <laughs> I was, I, I'm like, I'm just keep it real. That's why every time I see a young nigga about to do his thing, it just be like, dog, don't fuck up. <laughs> yeah, do your thing, do the right temptation thing. Temptation is real. Yeah. Yeah, nice. yeah, like, you know, absolutely do not fuck up. And, but, and if it's easy, don't. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Not saying that you would. No, he wouldn't. Yeah. I have hundred percent faith in this man. No, I got me the too. Vibe. Absolutely. I just want to get him. I got the energy. I feel I'm that. I'm just trying to get him fucked with on the way home. <laughs> like that. She ain't gonna do that. You know what I'm saying? Be quiet. And oh, sit there. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and cool. Listen to our music. Yeah, okay. Cool. You know what I mean? Listen. Like I said, my girl will be like, nigga, let me glance through the DM or something and something. Look at who that? <laughs> you said you ain't. Uh, let me op- open that joint. <laughs> you know we gonna read it together. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. We gonna read that together. Um, but we do a, a little joint on here called um for better or for worse. Well, we ask like a random, uh, crazy relationship question. This Jones, Jones sometimes can get deep, and I want to get what you would do in this uh, situation and what everybody would do. So, alternate universe, because we never wish nothing bad on nobody. Alter, we always have to say that alternate universe. You wish a significant other, wife, or whatever the case may be. One of her parents comes to you and tells you that they have a terminal illness; they're going to pass away. They're asking you to hold that secret. They say, we, you, I trust you. I'm only letting you know because I, I know that you'll take care of my daughter. But you absolutely cannot tell my daughter about this. And also, now my, we can't ask him because this nigga about to get millions of dollars. But they also told you they was leaving their fortune mm-hmm. to you, you know, um, to take care of their daughter and things like that. What would you do? Now, obviously, if you... Uh, disrespect what he's asking and you tell her they're not giving you or her nothing because they told you they said listen we just she's not mature enough to handle the money the family funds whatever the case may be but we trust you we think you're a blessing in her life all of this type of shit you're a responsible young man would you tell your girl or would you hold her her dad or mom down that says listen i trust you i love you like my son for real and i need you to hold this secret what would you do Mm. Um, mm. I, I, I ain't going to say nothing. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm gonna You're going to keep the mouth. secret. Yeah, mm. keep, keep my mouth closed. Until, mm. I mean, and then she'll find out when, when everybody else find out. That's like when, when, they, yeah. when they pass. Because it's, yeah. it's, it's safe to say that you yeah. probably... You know, you probably tight with in-laws or not even in-laws because y'all might not be mad, but yeah. your significant other family, they mm-hmm. tight with you too. Mm-hmm. Right? He said, got him. <laughs> got him. Listen, I don't, I don't know. God. Some looks coming from You don't think that she would want more time to like, to value her time with her parents? Like you wouldn't think about that? She said, well, I already be doing that, though. Yo. Oh, that's so, so would you start suggesting stuff oh. like that? So hold on. What Boots is saying if, is. If he's sick. 
or mm -hmm. the parent is sick already, mm -hmm. you should already be spending that time with no, them. No, but they don't know, but they don't know. So, so Boots, so what Boots gonna do, Boots gonna be just like, you know, t you know. And I'm gonna be throwing a little hints like, yo, uh, yeah, life, go over yeah, there. life is short, man. You really need this. You know what I mean? My dad cool, fuck that nigga. He do a hundred push-ups a day. I ain't worried about that nigga. Nah, go, go. <laughs> He, he needs you. Go. And what if she don't listen? Like, she continuously doesn't no, listen. She gonna listen. <laughs> you can't go off my situation because I know she gonna go. So basically, you ride, you you gonna ride out the parents. You gonna respect yeah. what the parents are. You gonna, I'm gonna, gonna respect, them I'm gonna respect what they saying and then I'm gonna throw a little hints and you, know, you need to go to, go see your dad at least, you know, twice, two, three times he gonna get that inheritance too. <laughs> Boots. <Yeah. laughs> he done <laughs> <he, he laughs> found, found, <laughs> found a way to finesse the whole situation. I'm gonna give her hints. I'm, a, I'm not saying none of them. Yeah. I get the money. She'll find out. We all good. Mm -hmm. Yo. No, I ain't worried about You're the money. You're all good until just... she finds out you knew the whole time. Yeah, yo. How's she gonna find out I knew the whole time, though? You th oh, that's why you were throwing all those hints, because you knew. So, no, yeah, so, no, no, that's only your niggas tell on themselves. Right. And niggas gotta learn. It would come never, out eventually. Never. Not because the dad passed. Mm -hmm. It yeah. would come out. Nah, it nah, that's what he tell. No, that's only if the pop did some bullshit. He told the one cousin, <laughs> I told Boots. He's the only one that know. So then oh, when they ask something, they argue. And just like when her dad told you about the <laughs> shit and you ain't tell her, you bitch ass nigga. <laughs> you know what I mean? Shit like that. Porter Rich, what would you do? Man, listen, I ain't gonna hold you. I would, um, ah. It's rough. I ain't gonna hold you. It is kind of rough because I know that's sentimental to her, right? Mm -hmm. I know it's sentimental to her. and She will want to know. But at the same time, I ain't gonna hold you. I've had relationships where I grew cl super close with like the parents. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like they really became like moms. Like what up, moms? Whatever. And and a lot of those situations. Guess what? You might be with a partner who may not like just be like I guess as is sentiment sentimental and as emotional or whatever or as has much feelings as you. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Or you might be really really like be able to relate to that and be like, nah, I'ma hold them down. I'ma hold that down. I'm not saying nothing because I understand where to go. So it's crazy, but then at the same time, you gotta look at the foul play that you deal with when your significant other finally find out, like, oh, you've been new, you know what I mean? Whatever. But I think I would um I think I would honor my uh my the, the parents. The parents. Mm, okay, okay, yeah. okay. I think Richard. I would honor the parents and um me and my significant other, we gonna get through it. Cause guess what? If I don't get the money, she ain't getting it. So I just feel like <laughs> that's that's the nah, whole thing. I just, and, and I ain't saying it's all about money. Yeah. I'm just saying like the parent gonna die regardless. Yeah. Right? She not he not with telling you regardless. Yeah. Right. So my whole thing is like, not only am I gonna respect what they want, you know, which is like kind of like their last wishes before they leave here, mm. which is important, mm. right? Your last wishes before you leave here. Right. We got to think about that, too. Because if I'm in my deathbed and I'm telling my best friends, hey, I just want to smoke a joint. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't bring me the weed. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, you're done, nigga. Oh, I'm not telling God nothing about you. <laughs> ah, go get up there. That nigga was on some fuck God, shit, God. God, be like, what's up with your homie? I'm like, that nigga was fake. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but G shit, I would go with the parents mm. and I deal with it later with my other person who's still living because the mm. parent is actually gone now. Right. Mm. Right. What about you, Wally? Um, I would want to put myself in this situation rather than me hold because I could hold a secret. That's mm. just something I do mm. naturally. Mm. But I would want my significant other not to tell me. Okay. You know, I just mm. I for for me it's just more of like I'd rather I'd rather find out when I'm gonna find out. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't wanna know like ahead of time, whatever. Or when like you're I supposed will to find out. Right. I would rather my significant other to kind of just do them and just protect that. Because I wouldn't if he told me that and I'd be like, damn, like my dad told you not to say something, I'm gonna look at him like, yo, like right. you know, I value, you, you know, God rest my dad. You know, I love my dad. That's you know, God rest his soul. View. But I would want, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, like my dad told you to keep your word. That's a different deal. And you just, did, you just did this, I'm going to look at you different. That's a wild one. Now, mm -hmm. Dev what? is the opposite. I'm motherfucking telling. Oh. That's a piss act. <laughs> Thank listen, you, Listen, yo, straight up. Nigga, nigga, listen to me. I'm telling <laughs> E immediately. <laughs> Babe, we got to have a talk. Crying, everybody. crying the whole nine. Listen, this is what's going down. Because I'm real bad at like, 
lying or keeping the secret, I'll fuck it up later. You know, somehow we'll be talking about something and mm -hmm. I'll somehow fuck something up where she'll be like, hold on, so when did mm -hmm. you, you know, you want my, hold on, did you know? Two and, and two together. It, it'll get out there and then I'll be public enemy number one. Fuck that inheritance. Matter of fact, I'm going to try his chin on the, on the inheritance part. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm going to try. You know, okay, then give it away to charity then, nigga. Fuck that. I'm telling. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm telling, I'm telling, I'm telling. And I'm going to just tell him, like, my nigga, I had to because, because of what we talked about. And look, look, she's saluting, right? Right? Listen, look, look. You see that? Because I might tell her, give her the hints. Go kick it with your dad. Go kick it with your dad. Go kick it with your dad. And she not do it, right? Mm -hmm. Just ignore you. She not going to think about how many times I said, go kick it with your dad. Until? till he passed. And she like, what did you two know, two. Boots? Boots, what did you know? Because out of, out of nowhere, you was on my back. You know what I'm saying? In, in my personal life. Me personally, right, bro? This is real shit. Um, God bless my cousin Rich, right? My uncle came to me and told me, go see your cousin Rich. He not in a good place right now. You need to go see him. And every day, Boots, I made a fucking excuse. You know, uh -uh, I'm going to go see cuz tomorrow. I'm going to go see cuz tomorrow. And then one day I got a call from my uncle. And this is a strong nigga, Muslim brother. He don't, I don't see him cry nothing. I couldn't even understand what he was saying. Yeah. And he was telling me, Rich dead. And it's like my biggest regret in life. So I want to always give a person the opportunity. Like, no, man, when your peoples is going to go, fuck all that secret shit. Let it be known, because they going no matter what. Mm -hmm. Man, go spend every fucking millisecond you can with them. You know what I'm saying? That's just my opinion. I'm motherfucking telling like a motherfucker, and then he can figure out what he want to do with the Nah, that's respectable. You know yeah, I, I, I feel like both opinions is right, though. Yeah, I yeah, get it. Yeah. I get it. I feel like it's yeah. depending on the situation. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, of my situation, I tell her that all the time. Go see your mom. Go see your mom. So she not going to think nothing of, nothing of it. <laughs> You know I think the parents are fucked up for even putting the person <laughs> in a situation like that. Yeah. Because I, I guess some people, the parent might not just want you to go through, like there's a levels of grieving. I can understand that, but why would you tell her significant other not to tell? Only because, because you're telling them because you're trying to tell him, I need you to, I'm going to need you to do something for me. Yeah. I'm going to need you to what, take, take care of her. I'm going to need you to hold, because there's a different weight on you when a motherfucker come to you and say, I need, I'm assigning you to do this for me. But they could have been like, I'm gonna need, like, they could have just had a talk with him, like a heavy talk, like, you know, I see you being with my daughter and like, it's I different. want you to always hold it down <laughs> if anything ever happened to me. He didn't have to lay if, a whole. See, the if, the if uh, joint is a little different than the, I'm out, mm -hmm. I'm bouncing, I need you to do this for me. It puts you in a whole See, different scenario. Make, it, make your head spin. Yeah. So you gotta, you gotta do what he say. Yeah, uh, nah. So I, I get, yeah. I get both sides, but you already know, babe. I would tell you. I'm just letting <laughs> you know. Boots, he ain't telling his girl. I'm telling you, babe. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. can, uh, can we, can we bring the wheel? Can we bring the motherfucking wheel, the wheel out, man? I ain't telling because I know how females get. Yeah. She could take that shit, run with, it, go gonna... crazy anyway. If she gonna go crazy, she gonna go crazy anyway. Right. She a humble one. She fuck with me. She trusts me. She trusts that, me. That's 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 for you. Man, Boots, Boots, listen, man. I appreciate you coming out to this joint. Um, I'm going to make my... I'm, I appreciate I'm, you. No, no, I want to make sure niggas don't think I'm bullshit. I'm going to make my way down to the gym to get fucked up. I'm seeing your address. Listen, listen. And, right and you go, and you we got to get footage of it. And you're going to you come down to the dojo. All right. You know what I mean? Come to the... Gee, gee or no gee work? What you want? No gee. No gee. All right, no, no gee work. You know what I'm saying? And, and we're going to do this. And we might film it and put it on the Devil Way show. Y'all can see me get knocked the fuck out. <laughs> Y'all can see, see me get knocked out. Um, hold on. Rick, let, let the women... Let the women... My bad, my bad. You, you know, spin the wheel. You know what I'm saying? What is going on with the new categories on the wheel, though? I'm confused. Uh, listen, listen, listen. Yeah, hopefully, She's hopefully, so wild, girl. hopefully, it do, uh, listen, hopefully it don't land on nobody else. Nobody else name that ain't here and shit like that. All right. Let's get a motherfucking spin. On his choice. I got money on me too. <laughs> oh! 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 oh. 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 oh.
<laughs> Twerky! Oh, ain't no place better than here. Uh, it's the oh, oh, my bad, I know they feeling me now. Yeah, we're tired of the crowd. Like the new we gon' wild. Yeah, yeah, breaking it down. Now it's more of blood. We got boots, no money. What up, and it's going down. What up, and it's going down. Chopper gon' hit him, you know we gon' split him out too. We ain't fucking around. All of my niggas be smoking the gas. We smoking the gas by the pound. What was the sound? Let's I'm go. in the motherfucking town. Cash on the chain and I'm busting it down. Now with the act and we busting around. H2O hunting them down. If you try us, we releasing the hounds. We going in and get This has been another episode of the Devil Way Show. Special, special, special thanks to Jerron. Boots, Ennis, and the rest of the whole family. Shout out to everybody that's been tuning in week to week for this season, too. We got a whole lot more coming for y'all, man. Peace.